Support for this program is provided by... The Women's Hospital delivers comprehensive health care to women and infants through inpatient and outpatient obstetrical, gynecologic, and education programs. The Women's Hospital, only at Deaconess. And by Toyota Indiana, Pump It Up Evansville, Gigi's Cupcakes, and the Vandenberg County Prosecutor's Office. Sexting is the sending of sexually explicit images or language to another person. And today we're specifically talking about the sending of those images and language to minors and how important this topic really is. I mean, I think parents would be really surprised to know how much it's happening. I can imagine as a parent how incredibly hard this is to even start this conversation. Like, how do you even start it? What am I supposed to say? So we're gonna educate you and give you the tools that you need to even feel comfortable having these conversations. Well, we see it as early as seventh and eighth grade, the request. Um, I'm not gonna say it's extremely common at that age, but it does occur. I think our freshmen and sophomore, or freshmen and sophomores are more vulnerable. Um, to those requests and so I think we see it happen a lot more often. They're oftentimes still seeking um, attention and that, at that, in that moment it feels very positive um, and they're getting some attention and acceptance from somebody. And we still see it junior and senior year um, but I think at that time the girls have become a little bit more empowered to say no and more confident and um, maybe have experience negative consequences related to other choices that help them to be able to um, say no um, or to respond in a way that lets the person know that they're not going to do that. Oftentimes it's boys actually sending pictures, inappropriate pictures, and saying now it's your turn. And so I think girls um, sometimes feel like, well, if I have that on him, then it's safe to do that. I think I'd be wrong to say most girls are sending a picture back. Um, I believe that there are um, typical personalities that will request um, pictures and girls will either not respond or they will send a picture or they will send back something that is quite strong in how they feel that's not okay um, and that they respect themselves more than that. A concern of mine is that adults probably don't have a very accurate picture of how often this really is occurring. Um, not necessarily that the girls are sending the pictures, but the request for pictures. Um, but then the flip side of that is um, scary also because it seems as though teenagers may feel that it happens a whole lot more often than it does. And the fear in that is that it becomes very normalized and that it's really common for people to be asking for those questions and they feel like everyone else does, it's not a big deal. I actually came up with the headline as a joke almost. I didn't think it would go through. I had no idea that it was actually going to go into print. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, for me, I feel like it's something that grabs the attention. Like we don't, you talk to anybody, they don't necessarily say, oh my gosh, I was sent a picture of like with nudity in it. Like you, you don't say it like that because you're, you're offended, you're disgusted, you say it harsh. Sure. And I really yeah. wanted people to like almost have a harsh reaction, like, oh my god, what's that? Like, right. what's this about? Is it really about what it is, or is it about like the context of what it is? About two weeks before it was written, my friend accidentally sent me a picture, and um, a couple weeks before that, I knew some people that had photos sent to them. So it was kind of like, when I received it, I was like, what? Why am I getting this? I was almost offended by it and disgusted. And I was like, you know, I know I'm not the only one that feels this way. 
and we just so happened to have our sex issue <laughs> coming out and so we were all like spitballing ideas about look what do we want to draw attention to and one of my uh, co-workers was like why don't you draw attention to the event that just happened to you and I was like well you know that works sure and when I started reaching out no one wanted their name to it because they're like well we don't want to sure. sell out who has it and um, that's why one of the girls was off the record but with her name, but um, you know, it's kind of shocking when you actually reach out to people through social media, how many people want to share their story with you and how many people have been, had different reactions to it. You know, some people are just completely disgusted and appalled by what they're right. seeing right. and other people just like blow it off and they're like, well, it's life. So I really want to draw attention to that as well, like with all of this happening, and it's happening a lot more too. Um, if you look at the studies, like with social media and everything, like, I mean, it's on the rise. Like, sexting is becoming a really big deal. I mean, there's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook even is starting, not making a comeback, but are people are still using it a little bit. Are teenagers not really on Facebook, are they? I mean, I am. Yeah, I'm It's kidding. mostly to con it's... connect with family. Okay. And older. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. <laughs> but Snapchat is a big one, too, and that's probably what people would use. Definitely. Is that the most, the most used one? That, for sexting, um, for sexting, for sending in like probably, yeah. images and definitely it would be. Like. So download Sneakaboo. Sneakaboo. That just sounds sketchy by itself. <laughs> I thought it was kind of cute sounding. Sneakaboo. That's interesting. Oh, that was it's the first thing that popped up. Sneakaboo. <laughs> you send me a Snapchat, and I'm gonna say, take a screenshot of it. And see if you can. All right. So do that. I have to get on the actual? I get on the actual Snapchat app. Okay. Okay. Wait. Let me take. Uh, what? Yeah. If you take a picture of it, see. Look. That's freaking. Yeah, I always just hold it over and it. I don't even know what's happening, you guys. Okay. So that I just added you. So. <laughs> I'm lame. All right. Now. Like I was cool like five <laughs> minutes ago. All right. You it's added me back. Us. So now we're friends. You. So let me. I'll send you a selfie. Okay, but make it cute. Okay. All right. Where are you? There you go, Riley. Okay. All right, so I'm s sending you send that now. Send it to me. Send it to me. All right, I just sent it to you. Okay. So are you on the other app? I'm on Sneakaboo. Okay. Riley sent me a Snapchat. Let's see. I'm going to refresh. Okay. So that's right. Wait. Oh, I guess Hold I have received. Oh, there it is. Okay, you ready for this? See, now see if it showed up that you sent it, that I Snapchatted it, or that I, I screenshotted it. Nope. You know what, you know what the crazy thing is too about this? Check this out, ready? I can email somebody that photo. That's, that's so scary. So it can say, I can save it to my camera roll, I can forward it to my friends, I can send via email, I can put it on Twitter, and I can put it on Facebook. And no one will ever know? No one will ever know because I will didn't... never know because I never got a notification that you screenshotted it. Right. Yeah. And the fact that you can look, you can still look at it. Like usually with Snapchat, it goes away with eight or ten seconds. Oh yeah. It's been what two minutes and it's still on there. I mean, and this, you've even like gotten out of this the picture of you guys is going to be around for a long time. Yeah. It's cute. <laughs> well, thank goodness. So it's embarrassing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, new background. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna put that on my, my background on my phone. But it's, I mean, I that's learned scary. that, and I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Well, I didn't know until somebody that we had interviewed before was telling me about this. And I was like, what? Because that was like the the whole reason Snapchat was there so mm -hmm. that you could just have a little bit to see it and then it would go away. And that mm -hmm. was kind of more safe, right? Yeah. And then it's not. So like freshman year when it came out, we all downloaded it because we're like, you know what? You can send, you can send the worst picture yourself ever and no one's ever going to see it again because after 10 seconds it's gone. But with that, I mean, it's never going to... We're gonna go away. Back to, I remember when I first downloaded it, my mom's like, I was like, mom, no one can have, like, we can send embarrassing pictures to each other because no one is ever gonna see it. My mom's like, I give it a week until people figure out how to screenshot. And then now, now there's apps that do it for you without being able to know. So that's scary. There are people talking a lot about social media. There's a lot of conversations that go around about social media um, and how you put yourself out there. And specifically, schools are really focused on when you apply for jobs and when you go um, and apply for college admissions they do look at your social media accounts and so those are things that they're hearing often to say that it's particularly focused on sexting 
um, probably not as many conversations going on around that topic, although I think it's hit upon in most of those presentations and discussions. Um, but it is also something that's awkward for parents to bring up, and it's probably awkward for the teacher in the school setting to bring up. And so um, kind of our society needs to work on getting past that awkwardness and opening up and having those conversations with our kids that, you know, you may be faced with this, and let's talk about what do you want to do if you're faced with this situation? What's something that you could say or respond if you want to maintain that relationship? So they're not in the heat of the moment making a decision very quickly, impulsively, leaving less room for regret. So Valerie introduced us to this really great app and it's called Send Instead and you can download it onto your smartphone and it's really easy, but um, you open it up and it's got around 200 images that you can just download right into your photos so you have them all ready. So say you get a request to send somebody an explicit image, you have these these responses right there at your fingertips that you can send off to somebody and some of them are funny some of them are you know a little terse and and but they're all really great and um, it's a great way to say no the the person kind of has the control and it kind of um just sends a response um that's a little easier than not knowing what to say or what to do so um <sighs> there's some really funny ones like um Keep calm and close on. I think it's pretty funny. already have these downloaded on your phone and you and you get a request I mean I know this is funny and it's kind of making light of it but but really if, if you get the request it's already on your phone you you send the picture you send this funny response or, or whatever it kind of diffuses the situation it takes the pressure off of it and it's kind of done at that point and, and maybe they won't get a, a request again I remember I was talking to this other girl and she said, you know, she broke up with the guy and he tweeted out her news, the whole Twitter. And, you know, it's like people are sick like that. They don't care. I mean, I guess if you do something wrong to that person after you've sent them that, like there's that constant risk. They're going to send it out to you. Um, there's a constant risk, even if you are in a strong relationship, that they're still going to show someone. Um, I mean to joke on it, to laugh at it, like, and then maybe their friend, you know, if they just text them and say, look, here's what so-and-so sent me, well, what if they screenshot it and then send it to their friend? And it's like, you can't really trust anybody when it comes to this because everybody just, that's who we are as a human. I mean, like, in some ways I'm a culprit of that too because I was sent something and here I am writing a story about it and talking about it. You know, granted I don't say names, but, you know, it's still like, talked about. Yeah, I do think in some ways, I think it's something mentally as well. I don't think it's all like that lust sort of thing. I think there's something mentally like low self-esteem or they've been bullied or like they have some sort of factor into it. I don't think, because the average person doesn't necessarily just take photos of themselves and send them out and show them. Like it doesn't usually work that way. But I think it has something to do with their mental state, almost. I learned that, you know, it does have more of an impact on that receiving end than a lot of people think, especially if it is accidental. Um, a lot of people, like I said before, a lot of people don't think of the person that, you know, maybe can handle it. And when they see it, it can just set them straight off into like an anxiety attack or a panic or something. And it's like, that was really interesting to find out how much of how many people are affected that way? Because you don't always think about it when you think of sexting. It's more of like, well, that person sent it, so they're going to be sent all over. You don't think of, well, what about that person receiving? Like, what, what are they okay? You know, and that's the shocking part of it, is that there's a whole other flip side to this problem than just who's sending. It can cause trauma in some people that have been, you know, sexually abused. And if they accidentally receive that photo that you might think is a joke, 
like they have to get counseling for that they have to go to a crisis counselor like it's not a joke anymore it becomes something that's harming their life the pictures start getting around they, they people will literally take their phone and walk table to table to show their friends or other people it can get things can get around very fast you're sitting at lunch sitting at school and then it just gets around very fast so I mean, you can see one picture on, on Twitter and then all of a sudden the whole school knows about it. So you have sexting between two minors who are exploring relationships, right? Okay. You've got uh, a two 16-year-olds who are in a new relationship, they're excited about it, and they're exploring what a relationship is. On the one hand, images that are sent between those two 16-year-olds are still child pornography and they can still be prosecuted as such. Child pornography uh, is not covered under the Romeo-Juliet statutes. Romeo and Juliet laws cover relationships that are primarily in high school, 18, 19 year old, 15, 16 year olds within four years. The relationship can be covered under those statutes, but the pornography sent between those two individuals isn't necessarily covered. So if an 18 year old boyfriend or a 19 year old boyfriend asks 16-year-old or 15-year-old girlfriend for a photograph, that photograph sent via text message, email, printed out in any way is still considered child pornography even though the relationship is covered under those laws. Okay. The scarier elements of, of text messaging comes from when you don't know who's on the other end right. and who's somebody who's a predator and is, is trying to receive those photographs and then either possess them, which is a crime in itself, or to disseminate them and pass those along. Is that something that you've seen here happen, like in, in our town? We have. So uh, I don't know of any websites that are currently operated out of Evansville. Okay. One of the problems uh, with the internet is it doesn't matter. People in Evansville, in Vandenberg County, in the state of Indiana can receive those uh, images and pass those along through the World Wide Web. And so we have people in Evansville who are receiving images that are maybe placed online from another country or another state, but they are bringing them into the community and disseminating them on local chat rooms and things like that. Holly, did you um, change your password on your phone? Yeah, why? Well, because I'm, I have to have your username and password so I can get on the phone. No, why do you need to get in there though? You don't need to be in there. Yes, I do. I need to see if everything's okay on that phone. There's nothing wrong on the phone. Okay, I, then why did it. you change the password? Be because I've had it all this time, so... Why did you choose now to change it? Because it's a little more private. You really haven't been on it. You don't need it. I'm not going to go through everything. I just want the password to have it so I can check things. On when do you need to check things? You don't really need yes, to check things. Yes, I do. Things. Yes, I do. Nothing needs to be monitored. There's nothing going on Callie. that you don't need to see. <laughs> yes, I'm your mom. I'm supposed to make sure you're okay. There's so much that can go on out there. I know you think you know it all and you know more than me, but trust me, I've been on this planet a little bit longer and it's scary what can happen on that phone now. I have dealt with plenty of students who are very frustrated um, with their parents wanting access to their social media accounts, to their phones. Um, I think that that's a personal opinion. Um, I, I've seen many positives come from parents having um, passwords for all social media accounts just to make sure that there's nothing going on and that's not just for sexting that's for bullying that's for um, just maybe what they're tweeting and how that can come back on them in college so there's a whole realm of reasons why that's a positive um, in terms of the phones um, there have been parents who have, um, who randomly will check. They just require that if they put a password on, that they have to have the password and they'll randomly check. And they have seen pictures that way from going onto their phone and seeing that. So I personally believe that it's um, a great parenting practice to stay involved. And um, sometimes being a parent means that your kid's not going to like 
what you're doing. And I think that trust is earned, it's not a privilege. And I think that as you grow um, with your child in the social media, you have to stay very on top of the new apps, the new um, accounts that they have. And so it's a, it's a constant battle for parents in this new technology. You know, when we started doing this episode, I really had kind of a real narrow understanding of sexting. You know, when I thought of sexting in young people, I have automatically, and you know, it's, it's, my, it's my perception, but kind of the first thing I think of is, you know, a girl sending um, a nude or explicit photo to a boy. And, and that is totally not right, you know. Um, the social worker brings up the idea of um, the requests that come in, the, the, the boys that are requesting those photos, and sometimes they're sending their dick pics first and then requesting those photos back. And um, if a girl's thrown off and doesn't really know what to do, or she feels like, gosh, I really want that boy to like me, or I don't really know how to handle this situation, that can be a really a tough place to be in. Another profound thing that I learned was um, the person receiving that image, like what that does to them. Because we know that there is an emotional um, and social um, ramification that happens when somebody has a picture that they received and they um, distribute it to all the people at the school. And we know that it's illegal. But I didn't really think of um, what could happen when somebody receives that picture that may have had a trauma or a sexual abuse or just finds it completely repulsive, what that does to them because they get this picture, but are they in an emotional place to see that? So you're asking yourself, okay, I, I learned all this information, what do I do? Okay, we found a couple different things. Have that conversation with, your, with the young person in your life. Just start it and start it really, really young. Um, maybe before they get that phone or right when they get that phone because we, we know that in junior high, that's when they're really starting to send and receive these messages. So resources that, that parents and guardians can use to kind of monitor that um, the social media and the phone usage. And some of those resources are mymobilewatchdog.com, teensafe.com, and phonesheriff.com. Now, you know, Project Reveal is not here to say whether that's right or that's wrong, but we want to give you those resources so that way you can decide what your family wants to do and, and what kind of relationship you have with your child, how old your child is, or, or just the different circumstances that you have. You can determine what's right for you. So if we don't know what's going on in the digital world of the young people, then how do we protect them? So I encourage you, open the dialogue. Look, we're not out to prosecute every Johnny and Susie 16-year-old who find themselves in a relationship exploring their sexuality and, and are sending photographs. Uh, but what we are working very hard to prohibit and to teach people that it is illegal and that we will go after you is where you are an adult and you take advantage of a young person through the internet or, or through text messaging or where young people are using it in ill will. Mm -hmm. They're taking that photograph of their ex-girlfriend or their ex-boyfriend because they're so mad at them and they send it to all the kids at high school or they put it on Twitter or they put it on Facebook or they put it on topics. We're not out to get everybody, but know the dangers, know it's illegal, and know that we are out to get you if you use it uh, for ill will or you are trying to uh, take advantage of a young person when you're an adult. Support for this program is provided by... The Women's Hospital delivers comprehensive health care to women and infants through inpatient and outpatient obstetrical, gynecologic, and education programs. The Women's Hospital. Only at Deaconess.